fill the final spot in next week's All-Star event. Yeah, and there was a lot of explosive talk on the desk, you know, waiting uh, names like Saros, like Wara. We've got incredible, talented players across uh, every single position in this match. But I really want to talk about the dynamics of where these two teams are kind of mismatched. So on one side, uh, we talked about Wara. You know, he came into this tournament through Proxy Vote, showcased that he has the hyper mechanics, that the okay. team will build the Protect the Vein comp around him, and he goes off. And even when Latin America South fell down in their assassin mode game, particularly against Japan, yeah. it was still Wara that was kind of leading the charge and had a pretty good KDA to his name when all was said and done. If you look at the other side on Japan, they have Heredi as their AD carry. Now, Heredi isn't necessarily known as the strongest AD carry. In fact, if I'm going to pick a weak link for Japan, I am going to look right there. So there are options for Latin America South to kind of exploit exploit them. Absolutely. It's kind of like a bit lopsided one back and forth, and we'll see a lot of map control like kind of being taken that way, I'm imagining. But let's go ahead and take a look at the All-Stars we'll be seeing on the Rift today, starting with the representatives from Latin America South. Up in the top lane, it is Heliar. In the jungle, it will be Kletos. Mid lane, Lugo. ADC, that is Wara, also known as War Angelus, and his support, Bear. <laughs> and their opponents from Japan's LJL. In the top lane, it's Evi. This guy is a superstar. In the jungle, it's Tussle from Rampage. Mid is going to be Saros. AD carry is Heredi. And support also from Rampage is Dara. Absolutely. And talk about a dominating squad. They have not dropped a single match here, only a couple of 1v1s, and honestly, that can spell the difference. It's one of the reasons that they're not the number one seed, despite the fact that they tied on match wins with Turkey. On the other hand, it's a tough, tough game for Latin America South. However, they haven't played a traditional 5v5 against the Japanese squad just yet, just Assassins. Uh, yeah, and you have two very different metas and mentalities kind of coming into this tournament. Japan, you know, you heard it in the interview, they're here to have fun, and that's kind of been the, the key to a lot of their success. And it's actually just amazing watching them across the rift, particularly Tussle and Dara. That's who I want people to pay attention to. These guys are teammates in the LJL. They both play on Rampage, and you can see kind of the cross-map communication. So when the LJL allows those two to team up, that's when success really blooms across the map. Yeah, it's been huge for them, and they've come up massive in a lot of the games so far we've seen. So we are about to hit into picks and bands, and that's an Oriana off the board. Latin America South on the blue side. That First is man on the, right. the Saros respect right there. But I also had a, a few theories. I actually felt that Oriana, as we moved more into the Courage of the Colossus meta, that Oriana would suddenly become the most high priority mid laner, since we should assume to see Syndra and Ryze permaband just because she offers great protection for hyper carries that can shred those tanks. She has great 1v1 individual matchups in the mid lane, and she can actually uh, put out sustained damage over the course of the fight to whittle the tanks down. Mm -hmm. uh, going further in the picks and bands, we have the Karma taken off the board. We already talked about the Cinder being something that is pretty much persisted in power for a while, and there's that Trundle ban on Team Ice's side. Yeah, already starting to see the meta develop a little bit. Obviously, again, Courage of the Colossus is the new thing in Vogue. Trundle works very well against those tank champions that have really started to dominate the top lane, and I especially like to see the respect of Tom Kinch taken away. You'd normally see that being uh, thought of as a support, but no, you don't. Evi is the one who has been dominating on that one. LeBlanc is the last ban for Japan, and of course, we will see a quick lock-in of Poppy. Helio. But this does mean that Ryze is still open and available into that mid lane. Now, again, Saros did take Velkaz. He is known as primarily an innovator, but I expect that most mid laners would be able to look through that rotation and find that champion in the wheelhouse. Yeah, I'll bet that Saros will want to take the last pick here and get the counter up against Plugo. It's a matchup that definitely should go his way, so he may be fine with just taking a skill-based matchup, and you can see they're focusing more on picking Heredi, something he's comfortable with, getting tussled at least in. Okay, and there's the Ryze. Yeah, we're going quick and fast through this. Uh, Key things to point out, we got Heredi on a utility AD carry. Again, War is going to be your high mechanical AD carry. Uh, Heredi is going to be your utility, so the Ash fits perfectly for him there. Tussle on the Lee Sin, that's the big thing. This is the guy that you want to watch. Uh, he's a very proactive jungler. He is the best jungler in his region, and he's looking across from the best jungler in the Latin America South region in Kletos. And Kletos is known for his rec size. So again, if, if Tussle is your aggressive jungler, Kletos is completely the opposite. He's your, uh, he's your dandy type of jungler. You know, vision, uh, control oriented. Yeah, get in, steal, steal something and get out. And uh, buff control is going to be very, very important, I think, in this game. Well, Tussle, true to his name, he does like to get in the thick of it and mix things up with the action. A lot of power, though, with that rise that Plugo is taking in the mid lane. And here we go, the Nautilus lock in for Evi here. Or it could be support. Well, not, not anymore, because no, no, it's no. Alistar. Never mind. It's her, it's Dara's Alistar. He is very well known for this back in his region. This is uh, terrifying for him to get his hands on it. And we know we heard Mithy talking on the desk. You know, why is Vayne not a, as high of a priority? Mithy was theorizing it's because she has a weak lane phase. The meta is still very much about who can control the lane 
especially the creep minions. But if you're opening up more tank supports, if you're bringing in more melee supports like the Alistar, it does give room for Vayne to shine and to find some counterplay in matchups. So Vora has the option here. There's the Janna. I'm looking for the Vayne. Uh, likely to happen. Oh. Oh, Ezreal, though, still considered an option. We won't let see if that gets locked in just yet. It does. So that's respect. paired. A very safe pick. And Wara is the hyper carry of this team. They're going to want him to be pumping out that damage late, so they're not wanting to put him in any danger early on. Yeah, talking to the team, they were said that they were totally comfortable building around Wara, that they knew his identity going into this tournament. He is the hyper carry of their region. Uh, we expected the Vayne to come out because he's very comfortable, but like you said, the respect. You've got uh, Dara on his coveted Alistar pick. You've got the ultimate from Nautilus coming in, as well as the Ash Arrow. You know, he's not going to gamble that many times with that many hard CC, so he looks for the very safe, very self-sufficient pick in Ezreal. Absolutely. So Japan uh, just shuffling around for a little bit as the last picks come in. Finally, they had that Cassiopeia locked in for Seros. Cassie versus Rise. We've seen that one quite a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's going to be morally. It's going to be morally, mostly about who's going to get the dominant lane shove in there. Um, but before we kind of talk about the mid lane matchup, again, just kind of collectively looking at these compositions, it's still very much about kind of creating area of effect in Latin America south sides and protecting Wara and allowing him to output that crazy amount of damage that Ezreal can do late game. On the other side, it's about your layering CC and having multiple engage options for the LJL. Absolutely. And uh, if they can land it all, I mean, there's only so many ways to get out of danger. Rise, Ezreal, those are going to be the big linchpins there for LAS in this 5v5. But that's a lot of pressure on Plugo, and he is looking across from Saros, you know, kind of a, one of the crown jewels of the LJL. He's known as the faker of Japan, so certainly a tough opponent, and he's going to really need to utilize every facet of Rise's power to beat that 1v1 matchup in mid. Yeah, well, they faced off in Assassin's mode already, and, uh, you know, that one went very one-sided towards Japan's way, but, you know, it's a different matchup. Everyone's not going to just be blowing up everyone. Not right away. We need some time for the Rise, the Cassiopeia, the Ezreal. They're all going to scale up, and, of course... This is going to be a very explosive match once we get to there, but I'm also paying a lot of attention to the jungle and seeing where Kleidos, where Tussle end up. Now, if you guys think that Latin America South can pull out the victory here in game number one, tweet us at LOL Esports, hashtag LAS win. And on the other side, if you think the Japanese Titans are going to take this one, hashtag JPN win also at LOL Esports. This is game number one. This is the 5v5 matchup. We've had a lot of fun, but this one is all serious. Serious indeed. Japan currently undefeated right now. Of course, through proxy did take second because of their 1v1 votes comparatively to Turkey. But this is huge for them. The region recently injected, you know, a, a lot of uh, structure and support into the scene, bringing in more imported players. The fact that we've got two Koreans on this roster in Dara and Tussle, uh, even though it's kind of the for fun tournament and they came in here saying we're just going to have fun. That's going to be our key to success. It would mean a ton for this region one who newly acquired their server recently to kind of make a splash on the international stage. I think that's a really important thing. These guys have been playing without a local server, so they tend to play, you know, on the Korean server up against some of the big boys there. And this is such a meteoric rise of this region. If they can make it to All-Stars through this tournament, it's big for them. And then on the other side, you have a very similar storyline. Latin America South at IWC uh, and IWCQ, they both took, or they took second both times. Last time that they were at All-Stars, they did manage to take third. So there wasn't any expectations for the Latin America uh, squads either. So for them to make it out of their group, for them to have this opportunity to look towards the finals, I mean, Japan's standing in their path, but it's also been quite an underdog story. Absolutely. And it's kind of an interesting mix of players as well. You have a couple of newcomers coming in, right? Like you've got Plugo, who is very much this kind of rookie player. And, uh, you know, they're facing off against some of their their more experienced foes as we get the second game started and underway. So I really want to point out where the junglers are starting in the map right now. You've got Kletos who's starting on his red buff, and then you have Tussu who's starting on the uh, top side red buff. Now what's interesting about Kletos' pathing is he's actually going to get level 3 off the Krugs, as will Tussle. But Rek'Sai, we all know her very famous for her ability to bot side gank from blue side in particular. So there aren't a lot of options because he's got an Ezreal and a Janna down there. But I'm kind of curious, you know, is he going to uh, prioritize Scuttle Crab or is he going to look for this bottom lane gank? to try to get this Ezreal and Janna started on the right foot. He's definitely going to apply some pressure. I don't know how far forward Heredi and Dar will be comfortable playing. You could see a huge amount of chunk damage coming out. Heredi has been pushed back very far, and, and Wara is just 
going to keep him at bay here. And this is what happens when you're punished by picking a melee support like that Alistar. Ezreal, if he can get on the back of the caster creeps, you can see how punishing he'll be with that mystic, mystic shot in tandem with Jonas. Yeah, so War is already playing this out very aggressive. Imagine if he'd gone for the vein pick as Kratos moves down towards the bottom and looking to get a get counter jungling on, he will steal it away, and Tussle's still up topside. Yeah, we've already seen some uh, divergence then. The fact that Rek'Sai is just moving a bit quicker through this jungle, although Tussle should be running straight for his blue buff, so if Kletos can't take this away quickly enough, he's got Smite. He's going to be coming around the side. He's got it. Kletos is able to steal this one away. Tussle actually doesn't know it's happening, but oh, he's going to be no. chasing down Plugo instead, who gets nailed on the Sonic Wave in an instant flash. Respect out of Plugo. Hold on, though. Here comes Kletos. Oh, right out of the bushes. Yeah, and rocking he's hard gonna flash. Place. Whoa, that's going to force Tussle to flash away too. Great start here for Kletos. But naturally, having Plugo missing both summoners is going to be advantageous for Japan in the end. That was both the Ghost and the Flash on the mid laner. Uh, low mobility. Yes, Ryze has a lot of safety on him because he's fairly tanky. It's hard to lock down, but we'll see if Japan can punish that. And did you catch if Ryze was taking Courage of the Colossus Mastery? I do not believe so. We saw a couple of Courage of the Colossi, if you will, uh, but it was on Dara, it was on Evi, which is to be expected, and I believe it was just on Kletos. I didn't see one on Plugo's side, but I, I, maybe we'll get that one back up in a minute. I was just curious. Uh, typically, it's common for Ryze to take Storm Raider Surge or yeah. Thunder Lords, but Russia has actually been playing uh, Rise with Courage of the Colossus on the Mastery. Well, you used to see Strength of the Ages on him every now and again, it's too. It's pretty disgusting. Yeah, that is a, that is a pretty uh, pretty good mastery. Let's just go with that. Stussel's backing away in River. Uh, Scuttlecry Vision helping out there. Wara and Bear will take their first back. We're only four minutes into this game. No serious leads. Up in the top, it has been a wet noodle fight. Star Guardian Poppy up against the Nautilus, who sent to the Riptide. Hillier's a little bit lower. He shouldn't have been fighting in those minions. But it's uh, still a, kind of a tempo advantage for... I don't want to... Yeah, I'm going to call it for Latin America South. And the reason why is because I feel like they got a good back timers off. Uh, particularly with their bottom lane. Again, Ezreal, he's not weaker on the initial level one. He's only weaker when he goes back, gets his tier, and then he doesn't have that battle discrepancy. But because they forced it back so early, Ash is only going to come back with a long sword as opposed to sitting in the lane and competing with, you know, uh, tier versus BF sword. So I still feel like they've got a, at least a little bit of tempo control here. Yeah, it's, it's definitely looking good for Latin America South because when you have a double tier comp, you, of course, want to, like, let that kind of ride here. And Kletos, he's actually... Getting Tussle's number, he might be able to steal this Scuttle Crab away. He's actually going to move forward, tunnels, and yeah, he does not pick it up, unfortunately, but uh, Tussle is now on top of him. Four versus level four, gets the knockup, unburrowed, and Tussle's not going to take that fight, but Evie was coming in, they were looking to scrap. Shield coming in, and a lot of people kind of forget the interactions between Rek'Sai and Lee Sin. When he goes to proc in his Q, she can disrupt that if she times her unburrow correctly. Uh, it's not as volatile as a matchup that it used to be for Rek'Sai, gotten a little bit better for Lee Sin. Yep, still top tier junglers or close enough to it. We've seen quite a lot this season and that hasn't changed too much, even on the inclusion of the preseason patch. Evie's gonna take his back up top. Meanwhile, Heliar had already done that and picks up Abami Cinder. He's gonna be doing a little bit more damage to those waves as teleport gets spent both sides. Yeah, and this is the big thing, the fact that Heliar uh, uses his teleport even though he had a window where he could have walked back to lane because the wave was pushing forward. He chooses to force the wave forward, getting the teleport out of Evie, and I actually think that's more important. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Plugo, he's got no flash. Zeros is on top of him, and he just keeps pounding him into the ground. That's first blood, and Zeros just catches Plugo. Yeah, we'll continue our point on top lane, but that is just Zeros. Hold on, though. Heliar, nice steadfast presence, interrupts. I was expecting Lee Sin might uh, participate in that since he's sitting at Krugs, but he's fine. Yeah, Tussle dropped the ball for a sec. Okay, but originally, the reason why this is good is because the Nautilus level 6 is going to mean more than the Poppy level 6 in terms of how they're going to use their ultimate's bottom, especially with that Ash. You're going to be much more scared about a targetable CC TPing down there and ruining your bot lane's day. So that's why I think it's smart from Hellier, the captain, to force Evie to use his teleport top to alleviate some of that pressure from the bottom lane. Right, and it removes a little bit of the tempo. We talked about this mid lane matchup being potentially lopsided. You could see the difference right there. Without his flash, Plugo was a sitting duck inside of the Miasma, and Ciro's just ripped him in half. I mean, it, it doesn't help that you're just, you know, eyeing Cassiopeia just straight down yeah. the barrel there. Yeah, didn't even need to use the ultimate. I actually didn't think I had it at that point. Uh, Tussle is going to be making his way into He's the looking once for again. a deep vision. Okay, he does get Scryer's Bloom off and spies nothing there. 
Instead, trying to grab a few camps on the other side, but Kletos is down to the bottom of his jungle. But this is more punishing than it used to be. Again, the spawn timers were changed, so from 100 seconds to 150. And really what that does is it opens up more windows technically for gank paths, and it tries to nerf uh, a bit more of the power farming junglers just because they can't continuously go back to camps. But Tussle has actually set a trap here. Not only will these be punished for punishing for Kletos because he has to wait that much longer to get the gold, but he's also about to face check in the Lee Sin. Right into it, gets the unburrow, and now Tussle is the name of the game as he might get caught between him and Plugo. Rune Prison, but in goes Saros. Not need to fight. Every single time, Evie is here. This that, guy has got the game sense. And that's why they chose to continue with the play anyway. Tussle goes in early. He lays down the triangle vision. Evie has control of the wave, but not control the wall. Yeah, he gets banged right into it. And now Kletos is double teaming with Heliar. Evie's going to be on the run. Tussle's incoming. He gets the hook. And Steadfast Presence interrupt. Low health bars, though. Flashing in. Queen's Wrath, who's going to get the kill here? Evie is incredibly low, but they're just walking away. The Buckler gets it, and Hellior picks up a double with style. Double kill for the captain there. Now, Hellior and Kletos will be playing on a team next year, but oh, whoa, nice whoa, flash. Whoa, whoa, whoa. OK, Dara, he was seeing red, but Plugo, just off cooldown, is able to get back under tower. But Seros did punish the last time the flash was down, so has another opportunity to do so. We think you're cute, Dara. <laughs> Always, every time. All right, so he's back to lane now. That skin is loud. It's, it is a really loud skin. Okay, let's let's check in on what's been going on with our bottom lane, or dual lane, I should say. Big lead for Wara, obviously. Big lead. But that's, that's there's how the we're BF Sword Ash. Big uh, lead. Big lead, big lead, yes. That is a 20 CS I am, lead. I am very uh, articulate when it comes to talking about leads. But this is the bigger lead. So uh, unfortunately for Evie, he loses track of Hellier. Hellier walks into Fog of War. He just shouldn't have. Uh, there's no reason to walk up that river yeah. right there. Tussle tries to come back, but he's delayed on there. It was actually a really good interrupt from Kletos. And again, these two guys are going to be on a team. They're going to be on Team Legacy next year in their home region. They're considered the best top laner as well as the best jungler. This tournament was very cool for fans because it was kind of the, the taste tester, if you will, to see how they would perform together. And yeah, we said that it was all going to be about war in the bot lane, but his job is just to sit there and farm. If you can get your top laner ahead, you automatically win bot lane anytime that teleport is up. Yeah, and that's the funny thing about Heliar is that he's not typically known as a super flashy player, but you got to hand it to him. That play. Calculating. Yeah, he just he turns and smacks the hammer as the buckler's going and just nails that sweet double. So it's two to one as we approach 10 minutes into this game and a well-earned 1,000 gold lead for Latin America South. You just need to think of Heliar as kind of your primary s facilitator. His name is the captain. You see that on and off the rift, and now they're setting up another play for him as here comes the rune war. He comes right in. That's a double team. Evi now is finding himself in a little bit of trouble. Burns his flash, but Heliar just dashes right into the tower. They're going to tank this through, and Plugo picks a kill. And this is back-to-back -back games that they've prioritized. They first pick Poppy. So Heliar having the confidence that he can take any matchup with that champion and having the execution to perform well on it. It's now Kletos. He's even around the, the backside here. I mean, he could try to go in for the steal, but he's got war behind him. I think they might end up giving this one up, but if they can collapse, Tussle is low. There's oh. a teleport. Cassiopeia secures There's the dragon, no but the chase is on. Dara! It. Denies the unburrow, and it looks like Fire going to get away with this one. There's another teleport available, but Evie's just going to walk up into the top lane. I think it's a mistake for Latin America South to execute on that TP. I think you can serve the cooldown there, so there's now a window for Team Fire that they can punish Ice here because they have the global advantage with Evie's TP. So Evie does have the TP build. Let's take a look at that one more time. And up in the top side, Elior was on Evie, but what he didn't know was that the rise was coming for him. And it's funny, too, because Plugo just pretty much uses that as a gap closer. He doesn't even dodge any wards with it. But it is enough, but primarily on Hellier, making sure that he's finding these key and crucial stuns. You know, he stunned Evie initially against the wall, finds him that time against the tower. Critically, Plugo gets the gold for that kill. And since he's been behind so much in CS, this is really beneficial for him. So it'll help him keep pace with Saros right now, who's already completed the Abyssal Scepter. Plato's up in the top. He's going to clear the control ward away. Spotted, of course, by Evie, and is going to respect that distance. Yep, also helps reactivate safety vision for uh, Hellier there. The fact that his ward is now now means something in that tribe rush. Yeah, big changes uh -oh. with the control wards here as Dara and Heredi this is dangerous. will be chasing the arrow. The ward. Arrow could come any moment. Wow. But respecting the volley, Baron so War just goes respect. in again. 
And here's the fact, Heredi and Dara have vision and information that Kalitos is on the top side, so they know the jungler isn't there. But the fact that Dara's under half health and just how much respect they're giving to Wara and Bear right now, I thought for sure it was going to be the arrow. And it tells the story, too, to Latin America South that Tussle is not around because they could be playing with that information, they could be playing much more confidently, but Heredi and Dara are not looking to tango with Wara and Bear. Someone who is lane. looking to tango, though. Yeah, Saros is always gunning for something. He's got complete control over the mid lane, uh, which means that they now have the ad the advantage of going, what I'm going to call the Silk Road. Basically, you start out on uh, the Raptor camp, and it feeds all the way down into bot lane. If you secure this with vision, or you can control this path, you pretty much get access to Dragon bot lane tower, as well as these setup plays. Oh boy, and here's why it's called the Silk Road, because there's a lot of trade going on. Tussle kicks Kleidos right into Dara. Bear's incoming. Here's the arrow. The arrow, it's gonna land, and Kleidos is a sitting duck. Bear gets the heal way too late. Tussle picks a kill for himself, and just like that, the LGL have equalized on kills. It's not done yet, Dara does have ultimate. They could look to dive this. War is in a lot of trouble. Wara might think he can go in and finish he's, off already. He's there, trying he to ship them the individually, shots. yeah. And no one's pushing the wave into the tower. Dara has to get in position and tank this for his team. He might have bought himself enough time. Oh, man. Dara goes in for the headbutt pull. Exhaust is on the flashes. Burn flash. He dodged uh, they one. can't get the least. He dodged two. But Wara's still going down, and they juggle the aggro effectively. Okay. Took a little bit oh, too oh, oh, long, Kledos, though. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, my God. He gets the flash. Three-man unburrow. Tussle is going to flash away. Smites the Krugs. And Kledos is just running now. He tried. I'll give him that. War with his best fancy footwork can't catch them. Oh, wait. Bear's going to try, though. Look this at Hellier. On. Hellier is just marching down the bottom. Flash Tornado. They've got Dara, who's running away. The auto will finish the job, and Heredi is going to get safe under tower. But is it going to be safe? Hellior is looking to come oh, he's in, running in for a heroic charge. Good night, sweet Steadfast prince. Steadfast presence, and goodbye, Ash. Auto attack finishes the kill, and Kleidos tanks it. Okay, even though Wara doesn't get any assists throughout that entire exchange, I'm giving him MVP of this play. He lasted so long. So initially, it's a play set up by LJL. They execute on it brutally. They find Kleidos. Uh, they manage to take him down. Oh. And that's all we got time for, because there's a flash rune prison. Another wall. Zeros gets knocked right into the wall. He did not have any summoners to burn. And See Helior it. winds up the poppy copter to deny that teleport effectiveness. And there was that window where the LJL actually could play cross-map globally better than Latin America South. But joke's on them, because Hellier beat them to the punch, walking all the way down to get involved on the back half of that play. Speaking of getting involved, Hellier has had ridiculous kill participation this game. Even though he's had you know, a misfire on a teleport, he has done so well. And Wara, down in this bottom lane, looks to secure first tower blood here. And they know Kleidos is here. Heredi, they have to respect this. The damage from Wara is too real. They're gonna get it. So 15 minutes into this game, they're gonna pull ahead in the lead. And Plugo's still taking pot shots mid. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna take some pot shots on the desk right now because I know that talking backstage, everyone's like, ah, Japan's got this. This is an easy 2-0. And I've been watching these games. I was like, I understand that they lost in assassin mode, but this team looked so good. Oh dear, Plugo. As we say it, uh, the gang squad comes for him. But this is perfect. Latin America South, where they're strong, is in their macro play. How they identify the objectives, where they need to be on the map, and moving to the correct positions. LJL are so good at their mechanics. They're great at skirmishing. They're great at pulling off these little plays here. So we yeah. finally, it's like replay now we, replay. now we get to show it again, because you're right. Wara just lasted so long and burned so much from this enemy team. He gets his flash off. OK, but look at how much they invest He dodges both the Q as well as the volley through where he positions behind his creep wave. And it takes so long to kill him that his team is able to clean up on the back half. And Kleidos died at the start of that fight, by the way. That's how long this whole engage was. But the important thing is, again, the individual decision making and the team decision making from Latin America South compensate for the fact that they may not have the flashiest mechanics to keep up with the brute force strength of the LJL. Because Tussle, Dara, Saros, these guys are superstars when it comes to 1v1s. I will tell you what, though, when you see these two styles match up, this is some good League of Legends. Heliar just knocks Heredi right into that wall. Kleidos perfect tanking. And yeah, it, it is it is macro versus the micro decisions, and it has been bloody. Six to five in kills now. And nobody's even eyeballing that dragon, by the way. Heliar gets some vision down here, but that's about it. Well, when it comes down to macro play, now we have to look at what the summoners are available to us. The fact that Heliar now has the teleport advantage or over Evie, and again, the fact that Kleitos got his hands on the wreck side. I'm telling you, if you are in a 5v5 on Summoner's Rift against Latin America South, Kleitos cannot have that champion. He is too influential on it. He's the shot caller of this team, and you cannot give him that 
that much global pressure. And that's the best part about this, too. Normally, in a, in a regular traditional best of three or best of anything, you can see what your opponent does and ban that out the next game, change up your pick and ban strats. You can't do that in game number two. They're playing assassin mode. And that's where they might fall down as they did the first time. Well, they have to win this game first if uh, they want to make that a tie situation, but no speculating about that from us. And just take a look across the board as we're 17 and a half odd minutes into this game. Who's looking really pretty right now? Helior, of course, working his way towards more defensive items. He has the Swifties, and that's come in so handy. Evi on the other side has done the same. But I think the real big difference is this mid. Still been a 20 CS discrepancy, but you can see Plugo looking a lot more comfortable, and he's also not opting to lane against Seros for the time being. It's kind of like what their damage sets are going to be as soon as we break out into these 5v5s. Uh, Wara and Plugo are still kind of waiting for their tiers to take off and that full kind of mid-peaking itemization to come online for Ezreal and Ryze. Uh, but things do get a little bit hairy as we start looking to late game. You know, if Wara doesn't land all of his skill shots, he doesn't have the, the easy, consistent damage that Heredi does on the Ash, things can go sideways because you're dealing with Cassiopeia and Ash and Nautilus. A lot of those champions are going to do a lot of damage. It's like you said in Pick and Ban, it's all about stacking that CC up and nailing a target, but... It has been hard to catch Plugo. I think Wara is definitely somebody to look for. This is a guy that will always E in. He's like the opposite of Wei Zhao. Just giving you a little throwback there, I know. The memories. Yeah, Plugo's going to take out this tower, though. It is nice to see Latin America's house shoving their advantage and able to nail down a few more turrets because they can, pound for pound right now, outplay if they match the lanes up correctly. And again, it's about abusing the lane assignments. As soon as we prioritize taking down first tower bottom, we suddenly pick up our bot lane. They're now in the mid lane. That frees up Rise to abuse the individual lane assignments up in top. And suddenly we've got two towers to zero in favor of Latin America South. Yeah, good news for LJL, though, is they're able to secure a little bit more vision. Scuttle Crab being taken away. Dara is going to find Bear and Wara. Tussle is flirting with danger. It's my kind of Lee Sin player. Oh, he's looking pretty good in this game. 3 one one's a pretty respectable score, and all the same Tussle, he just wants to fight, but he has a window of effectiveness. He needs to start using it. This is scary, though. This is like LJL's perfect. You can see Ash and Nautilus, they're rushing here. They want to go for the fight. Ash here, oh, it's going to nail Wara, and they pinball him to his death. And now the fight is on. Bear and Plugo trying desperately to run, but Helio has joined the fray, and he charges right into Dara. The poppycopter winds up. They know they can't take this fight, and they have got to bail out. One kill so far, but back to the safety of tower they go. That could have been worse, and it might Helior. get worse. Why is he still fighting? The hook's going to land. They're going to keep going here. Evie takes a lot of damage, return damage, I should say, but Kleidos is not healthy enough. He has to leave. Heliar is still trying to defend this tower. This might be LJL's first. No, they survived it. They weathered the storm. The LJL will not be able to find any sort of counter push on taking down the mid tower. That was super risky from Latin America South. They saw the chip damage on the mid tower. They thought that they had a big enough window to push it down. Tussle might find a, a table scraps, if you will, of taking away the red buff, but... Yeah. It was a little bit greedy of Plato's to try and take that after the fight, but let's see it all again because Tussle waiting in the wings set this all up. But again, the most important thing here is the fact that the tower is so low. That's why they're they're taking this gamble because you know that LJL's only response is to make a big, crazy flanking play, and they have all of the CC, like that Ash Arrow, like the Nautilus Ultimate, to pull that off. Unfortunately, Wara takes the Ice, the Ash, wow, Ice Arrow straight to the teeth. But fortunately for the rest of the team, Plugo is able to disengage them. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't just all fall down at that point because Wara, I mean, you could you could put up a, a bowling strike sound in front of that animation and just watch it go. That was an insta kill. They got the tower for it, so they have three towers to zero. LGL have not been able to find that gold, but you know this is a guy playing blue Ezreal. He's going to want to kite back a little bit more in the future. Yeah, we've seen a lot more priority towards the Trinity Force Ezreal, especially because yeah, you have the rise, but again. Plugo plays more as kind of a, um, a mage supportive control player. So expect to see him use Rise like that as opposed to kind of like a faker Rise where he's, he's forward, he's in your face, he's challenging oh, you. Oh, we've seen this before. I don't think they're going to be able they to get away with it. They launch themselves over a la CIS style and... They stop moving. Latin America South don't have a clue. They did not get the Rek'Sai Tremor sense. But they need to get uh, oh, Cassiopeia over there. Ah, it was a nice try, guys. A little early to attempt. It's only 21 and a half minutes. They can do it as long as Saros is there, especially because he has the blue buff. Again, never underestimate Cassiopeia's epic monster shred, uh, but unfortunately he wasn't part of the, the crew that got over with that blast cone. 
Yeah, a nice attempt, but now they're wise to it. Again, let's take a look as we have a momentary lull in the action. Six to six, 22 minutes in. Bear's gonna clear the control ward out of the back of Baron Pit. And there's a dragon apiece, but Latin America South have the objective-based one. As you can see, pings for LJL are looking for the top side. They still have yet to find a tower in this game. But they need to understand that the LJL, the most important objective for them on the map, is going to be that mid tower. And they have, again, the options on their composition to break it. Heredi really should just be standing in fog of war as opposed to matching up across from Rise and just trying to find one of those cheeky arrows down mid lane to help the LJL break that. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to be an arrow pod for a little while at least. He's very far behind Wara. But he's out of position. That's the thing. He's, he's clearing side lanes. And yes, you never want your Cassiopeia and your Ash in the same lane because then they're denying farm and resources away from each other. But the safe zones are disappearing. I mean, you can see the vision creep from Latin America South that's giving them dragon control here with 10 seconds on the next Drake to come up. And even though Tussle is doing his best to clear this out, they've got to be super careful if they want to try to contest for things like this. Tussle Blue is about is to, to walk Blue, into a lot of people. Uh, yeah, he's going to need that Banshee tail. The back. There we go. They're actually going to start this dragon off, but instantly Bear and Kleidos are right on their tail, and so is Heliar. But Plugo doesn't have teleport, so it is a 4v5 if Evy TPs down. Yeah, and you can see Heredia already running for it. They are going to give this Drake up. The Miasma laid out the carpet that they didn't want to cross, so LJL do manage to secure themselves a little bit extra regeneration out of combat. And again, uh, now it's suddenly Latin Whoa, America South that have the minute. poor lane assignments. Evy was abusing the tower and the Riptide! He can't quite close the distance. The shield Plugo nearly bought it. That was so close. He took a couple of extra tower shots. I mean, he got an assist with the tower. That happens. Okay, Heliar wants to fight here, and he's going to bang Tussle up against the wall. Steadfast presence. Arrow. Dash arrow. He's going to sidestep it here. It just goes right through the uprights of Team Ice, and now they're going to try to turn this fight. But Wara, he almost got caught himself before he... Someone's getting in the wall. He's backwards. I think the Good, is picking the asthma. target right now. Kledos is right on to Tussle. Meanwhile, Evi front tanking Heredi. Is trying to make the fight happen. Heliar couldn't quite get onto the wall, but they do get a flash unburrow. Kleidos is getting knocked back into this one, and Bears on the front. Tussle manages to find the fight before falling down. However, Wara is able to shut him down, and Seros is going on a rampage looking for Heliar. He needs another Twin Fang. Can he secure it? The Ash is able to pick that one up, and Dara now has gone in. This has gone pear shaped for Latin America South, but Plugo's coming to the rescue. There's a lot of low health bars. And now War has gone down. It's going to be Seros. This fight just keeps on going. It's a 3v1. Plugo, what can he even do here? He's trying to sidestep and no rune prison. He's going to get it now. And he is so low under tower. He gets one. He gets two. Oh, my goodness. Talk about making the best out of a bad situation, Frost. Tower gets MVP for both teams right now. Uh, Latin America South, they've been outmaneuvering Japan across the map. But when it comes toe to toe, when it comes 5v5, to Japan looked really good for a second until they tried to overdive. They pushed their luck so hard on that, and Plugo, massive props for baiting them in and taking down two before getting equalized. We got to see that again. Here's how the whole thing started. OK, uh, first and for foremost, Hellier has his ultimate the entirety of the fight, which is why uh, Team Ice are so confident and continuing to chase. Because they're like, we still have our primary disengage. We still have the Monsoon. We have the, uh, the Poppy ultimate. So we're free to kind of continue to chip away at them. If they get too close, we'll reset the fight. This is 4v5, too. Yeah, because Plugo's not here. Look at it uh, on your map. You can see he's actually running from base. So the problem is, is that the Maya, or not, excuse me, the Cassiopeia ultimate locks up multiple people, and suddenly those disengage ultimates don't mean anything. Bear barely got the monsoon off before he dies. And again, Hellier has had his ultimate the entire time, and he dies without using it. Yeah, he starts to wind up, but then they just instantly pick him away. And Wara, look at him just trying to kite this whole thing out. But Plugo, he comes in, they instantly exhaust him. Wara somehow stays alive for a little while, and it becomes a 1v3. <laughs> I mean, that was just wacky. Uh, problem was is then they don't manage the correct tower aggro juggle. And speaking of that, I guess we're fighting again. Yeah, I was going to say, is this still the replay? I think this is a completely different one, but it looks the same. Dara is getting chunked low, but he throws on his ultimate to stay alive. Heliar finds Tussle in the back as Bear gets a three-man knockup. We just keep on bumping around. Saros from around the side gets his ult, but Heliar targets on him. And War is in the back line. Chased around the back, a double kill over to Plugo, and they are cleaning house on the LGL right now. A double kill for Heliar. They finish the job. One for Wara. That's the ace, and it's Baron time. And it suddenly looks so much better for Latin America South when they're able to use their Monsoon and their Poppy ultimate effectively right there. The fact that Wara got a hold of both Saros and Heredi in the back line, Japan just, their tanks failed them. 
Yeah, this whole tournament, we have seen the power of fire, but ice is not melted just yet. 27 minutes into this game, it's a big goal lead, and we're going to start to see this fight. All eyes really need to be on Wara. Now, he's sitting in mid lane right now, but he's going to join the back half of this fight, and he's going to do a lot of chip damage to Saros. And Saros, again, is so important for Japan. Not only is he the Cassiopeia, but he's their best mid laner. He's the faker of Japan. If he goes down, things go sideways. Yeah, he gets chased by Wara pretty much this whole fight if you see off screen this in the is, river, but this, this is, is a real 2v1 ball. down in the river. Look at Saros, half health, takes the Ezreal ultimate. Now Easy's gonna come up behind him and just destroys him, obliterates him from the fight. Wara just trains on him the whole time, and Heliar at the end just kind of smashes him into the wall and takes the kill away. But yeah, at this point, it doesn't matter how tanky Evie is, the rest of his team's falling down around, and that monsoon comes up clutch. Yes. It's good reactions. I love the, the cheers. Now, these guys are happy to be here. Talk about They're loud JL behind having us. Fun. Yeah, Latin America South, they're having some fun too. How about uh, winning this game so far? We're getting 28 minutes into the game. It's a big gold lead right now. It's creeped up to about 6K. There's another Mountain Drake spawning in a minute and a half. All they got to do on Latin America South side is just keep on pushing these tower leads. LGL still have yet to pick one up. I'm telling you, people were saying, you know, uh, Turkey, they've got the best macro strategy in this tournament from the, the one 5v5 that we've seen. I'm like, no, I, I think it's Latin America South. Kletos just looked so good on this Rek'Sai. He's known uh, throughout his region as being the best shot caller in the region by the community and his peers alike. You can see that he's always going to be the first person into a team fight. He's always going to be setting up a wave. And again, that's why I think Rek'Sai is such a, a coveted pick for him. It allows him so much control over so many different assets of the game. But not only that, Helior is also doing exactly what he did against Southeast Asia. And he's just come up really big, with the exception of the fight where he dies with his ult still available. He's constantly threatening and he just fits the puzzle piece that the team needs to finish these fights and here we go again they have to actually use it but they got the tower they have the right idea more often than not where they fall down is in mis-execution but as long as you're still doing the right thing better than doing the wrong thing than executing on it well the thing is, is when japan win fights they either overcommit and the fight means nothing or the victory means nothing or they they win fights and they don't they're not able to translate that into objectives you think about the red buff bot skirmish. They technically won that fight, but what did it mean for them? They weren't able to take a tower off of it. They weren't able to, to siege a dragon or to take a baron. Speaking of dragon, now that Latin America South have got so much vision control and a force LJL back into the base, that one is an easy, uncontested take, and they get even more damage to knock down the objectives, and Japan's running out of towers here. But they have the ones that still matter, and they have a lot of wave clear. Um, it's still always going to be very scary to dive, both in Alistair, Nautilus, and Cassiopeia. They have great wave clear in the Cassie as well as the Ash. So they're going to, Latin America South are going to need these two mountain dra dragons and probably another rotation of Baron before they feel really confident uh, pushing into Japan's inhibitor line. Yeah, it's true, but Japan are definitely going to have to play a lot more conservative and not try to push too far out of their base and outside of their vision zone. But what this means is even though Japan are behind in the game by close to 10k, that they have kind of this six minute window between the next kind of Baron spawn, it's probably closer to seven at this point because Baron's still alive, of turning the game around, you know, setting up their vision, getting another chance, finding that another uh, another pick. And again, they have so many tools to do that, like the Ash Arrow on their comp. So Japan are still very much in this, as long as they don't lose here. Maybe give up an inhibitor. I don't think they'll need to if things look scary, but they've got another 10 minutes left in them to turn this game around. And a lot of it's going to be off the back of Saros. I think, like you said earlier, he needs to basically be the one who's dishing out the consistent damage in the fight. It's not Heredi. Heredi's going to be setting up those engages. If they can properly protect Saros with Tussle, with Evie, they can win fights still. But ultimately, I actually think that means the responsibility is on Tussle, on Dara, on Heredi, and Saros just needs to be that follow-up. But Heredi with that Ash Arrow, you know, we said that this is a, a weakness that Latin America South could exploit in the individual matchup. He needs to step up now, and he needs to find that key arrow on Bora, on Plugo. He found it once. Yeah, you can see that the LGL are definitely going for that protect your big carry kind of build. You can see the redemption's been finished on Dara right now. Um, obviously, he has his own Seraphs. Seraphs does to, you know, keep himself alive a little bit longer, but you gotta be really, really careful and, and save your summoner spells for those big situations. And we'll see how it happens as Heredi's trying to defend topside. They are being pulled apart by Latin America South. They're just Push. pushing farm into them right now. Uh, again, I still think this game probably has between 10 and 15 minutes left in it. Japan are, are very much still in this especially if they get a, a good 5v5. 
Got and really, Latin America though. South are, are playing the split push pressure game. They don't want to commit to one thing, because again, diving is still going to be very scary. It's just, you know, find the chip damage where you can. If you can get a pick, take it. But slowly pulling them apart at the seams, as opposed to just bashing them in. Yep, although Wara He's good. cannot dodge the dredge line forever, but he does get out of range, so there's no retaliation available. Uh, Heliarx keeps on pushing the wave in the bottom side, but they've really done their, their job up top when they just keep pecking away at this turret. But you can see that the LJL is responding very quickly. They realize this is the choice target. Because Latin America South need to keep LJL within the confines of their base. We're now on the 1 minute 30 warning for Baron, and the longer that they can keep the LJL trapped in here, uh, the less time the LJL have to kind of set up a counter defense, you know, setting up their vision around Baron, trying to make it advantageous for them to contest that objective. I definitely want to go back to Heliar for just a minute because he's been so critical to denying a lot of these fights. You see every single time Tussle gets anywhere near him, he throws in the steadfast presence. He knows he can deny the big kick backwards. That's why we haven't seen Tussle be able to make these hero Lee Sin plays this game as Heliar gets the wind up. They're going to siege this. Teleport. They might be able to cancel it. They will, in fact, do that. And Dara now is in the thick of things, and he is running out of health very fast. He might have the Unbreakable Will on, but it may not matter. The Redemption is enough to keep him alive, but now the Inhibitor is under fire. Saros threatening, chasing them away. They do not want to commit, but they got what they came for, and Plugo gets hooked. Tussle is looking for the kick backwards. He finds it on a Plugo, but they can't finish him off. He's going to flash into the monsoon. Heredi finishes the job with an auto attack, and now Evie is looking to make this bigger. Tussle takes out Bear, finishes the job, and Kleidos is going to fall. The LJL have done it. They managed to get a fight they need here, and Dara goes in. A big flash headbutt pull, a double kill for Saros, and it is only Helior left disaster for Latin America South. The thing that I'm looking at right now is the fact that Baron is 15 seconds from spawning. Hellier, yes, he's still alive. Yes, he has his teleport. But you're looking at 30 seconds before Kletos is up. Does he even have any tunnels? He'd have to walk from, from spawn. Oh, wow, Evie just gets pushed back. Hellier still wants to try and deny this, but there are such long death timers. 15 seconds on Plugo. Bear is the only one here He has here his ultimate. Up. He He's can knock ultimate. them can off the Baron. this, though? Saros is tanking right now. The windup is there. The poppycopter is going to send two flying. Dara and Heredi, they can't finish this on their own. Hellier looks like he may have done it, and he's chasing down Heredi. Look at the damage that this poppy is pushing out, but the rest of the team has arrived. He might have just bought enough time. He goes down, but guess what? You got to shred through the Guardian Angel, and meanwhile, Kleidos has ulted back to mid. They stopped it. Disaster for Latin America South, but the hero that they need, the captain up in the top lane, Hellier. What a great poppy ultimate. The fact that he disengages the two correct members of getting the Cassiopeia and the Lee Sin out of the pit so that Ash is left to tank the Baron, single-handedly saved them. 100% of the way, and now, it is Latin America South that have control of the Baron pit. The LJL may have won a fight, but they still could not get anything. They've still got no towers, Frost Current. We're 35 minutes in. It's fine, because at this point, if they win the Baron, if they win the Elder Drake, if they win a big 5v5, they're strong enough that that zero tower will automatically become three towers. Probably I hope so, because it looks like they're well. allergic to him otherwise. <laughs> LGL is going to try and force this Baron. Look at, they've actually caught a, out of position. This could be a good for them. Here's the, the scary thing, in. is how quickly they'll burn this. Oh, okay, they've got the TP. It. Waiting for Heliar. Okay, looks like they could try to take this fight. Heliar a little bit low, and he does not want to commit, but they've Plugo. caught him in. Plugo's around the backside. They just need to buy some time for him, and he knocks a bunch out before he goes down. Plugo looking for the flank. Straight on to Saros, who ults away, but Saros has managed to stay alive. Tussle has found Plugo to finish the job, and all of a sudden, the team fighting prowess of the LJL just comes up huge. Wara is kiting and running and trying to keep himself alive. Tussle has not gone down just He's yet. Gone. Wara is actually keeping them all on the back foot. He arcade shifted Alistair's animation of the headbutt. You have got to be kidding me. And he's going to rejoin Bear in the mid. Now there's a teleport. These fights just do not stop. This is hilarious. OK, um, I hope we get a replay of that team fight, because there's one person that I want to point out in particular. Kratos, are you crazy? Apparently. He's nuts. Yeah, they brought Baron Wara here. They're shredding through this. Are they going to trade an Elder for Baron? This is still nuts. There's a massive mini wave topside. This is so dangerous for Japan. OK, so we don't often get to see these types of trades happen. But the problem is, is the wave clear on Latin America South is still fairly weak. It's a little bit better just because Ezreal decided to go for the uh, Iceborne Gauntlet. But before we get to that, I want everyone to pay attention to Plugo here, because Plugo
Kaluga is really what cost Latin America South this fight. And better than that, the fact that Team Ice, or excuse me, Team Fire, know how to team fight so well. Sarah sitting just right in the back on that Cassiopeia, protecting Heredi, knowing his responsibility. Plugo finally comes around the side to get involved in the fight, but it's too little too late. For so long, that Rise wasn't doing anything, contributing nothing to that fight. As soon as he walks in, he just gets blown up, and it's simply through the the mechanical prowess of Wara, especially that arcane shift there, that Latin America South are able to get any sort of trade in that engagement. Yeah, no kidding. All right, back into the live game. Look at the yeah, damage that fight. Wara was the reason they didn't lose it all, and Bear, he might lose his health right now. No, no, no. The only number you have to pay attention to is 367. Rise did less damage than Janna. Not great that time around, but this may be a different story as Evie gets caught and has to tank a lot of damage. They've knocked him into the wall, but they can't finish him off. Redemption is coming up huge for both of these teams this game. That's Dara's spent, and that's a half health inhibitor. Baron Minions versus Double Mountain Drake Elder. Dragon changes did come through on 6.23, so they've got a bit more room to work with on this buff. They're not gonna go for it though. Japan have defended. It's such a tense moment when you're working with these two big, powerful buffs. I think they're effectively going to neutralize each other. That would have been bad. Yeah, Wara has had some of the quickest reaction timings that I have seen in a long time. Very impressive play from this guy. Even when the fights look lost, he's able to still come up with something. He almost got two picks there. And he wasn't initially the guy voted in, and now I'm just like, Latin America South, why not? This guy's so good. This, he's a rookie. This was his first competitive split in the summer of 2016. And yeah, he was the third voted guy. Well, I bet they're pretty happy he's here now. I would be. They built The first time they were on 5v5, they built a composition around his vein. He shows up in assassin mode. You know, true, they played an AD carry. He is the actual AD carry. Yeah, this is kind of crazy stuff. Excuse me, I was talking about Plugo, my bad. <laughs> Wara is the guy that roll swap from being a mid laner, so there's your mechanics. It's still hard to roll swap from being a mid laner and then be recognized as one of the best 80 carries in your region. Yeah, it's a big, big deal for him. Uh, and I think he's shown, like, you, you can look at Vayne and like, okay, a Vayne game, he goes off, they did protect the comp, and that's still impressive. But you think, okay, does he have any other tricks? He looks so good on this Ezreal. It makes you wonder why he even bothered with the vein in the first place. Kletos was looking like he was wanting a flank. He was just uh, taking a scenic tour. We're 40 minutes just about into this game. This is one of the longest we have had in this tournament so far. The thing is, is again, the Elder Drake and the uh, Baron buff uh, really neutralized th themselves as far as you know the objectives that would fall down on the map. So again, we're now in another scenario where the LJL might be able to chip away this tower. I would certainly give it away if I was Latin America they South. They need the gold at this point. Let them have it. Deposit it into their bank accounts. It's going to start earning interest for them. But this means get one. that we're now looking towards the next respawn of these epic monsters. Although Rune Warp is pulling Plugo somewhere. I'm not sure where. He just disappeared. I think he just went. Ah, he's back to mid. Back in the mid lane. He juked us both. Juked the observers. <laughs> The question is, do Latin America South want to fight here? Because they seem 50-50. Tussle is not with the LJL team. It's more so that they have the inside track on the mid lane, so they're forcing the LJL to respond. Uh, they may actually be able to just burn through the tower, depending on how much damage they just brute force do to it. Again, the tower reduction is coming through right now because they don't have any creeps. No, and Heliar narrowly dodges away the dredge line of Evie, who's chasing down. Clearly, the LJL want this fight, and with Tussle rejoining them, the 5v5 could get hairy. But it's cute little things like this, Latin America South, you know, uh, showing that they understand how to play with creep waves and different pressure points on the map. They, they understand that this is still an incredibly terrifying 5v5 across from them, especially when they're that far forward up a lane, and Asher would be very punishing. But just constantly trying to, to cheat their way across the map, just creating these small advantages by getting to a wave faster, by setting up a big push faster. Yeah, and it, it's evened out so much over the course of this game because we saw Latin America South getting out to a, a flying start, really, and winning in every lane but the mid. 
Uh, but now that you're getting close to max items, it just doesn't matter anymore. I mean, what put them in this position, this was their game to win, but they got greedy, they got impatient, and they overstayed when trying to put down that top inhibitor that really allowed Japan to get their foot back into this game. Otherwise, this should have been done and done. This was a 10k gold lead for Latin America South, and now we're to the point in the game where the gold discrepancy doesn't matter at all. Not only has it almost completely closed or, or been cut in half, but everyone's on their core itemization, everyone's approaching six items, so so Latin America South, you had it, and you gave it away. Yeah, and I think the Baron is going to be a big tipping point in this game. Once again, it's a minute and a half out. You can see that Latin America South just continually trying to push those waves and keep the vision control on their side of the map. But there's a few deep wards here for the LJL. They just keep on moving in and grabbing a bit back for themselves. Such a close game with 17 to 16 in the kill department. And the fights have definitely been going Japan's way. This is where control wards get pretty broken, however. The fact that... Uh, all of our ward spots have been pretty much eaten away by different ingredients or completed item builds. That you're pretty much entirely reliant on just the support sight stone as well as your uh, three control wards that they can hold and the fact that it also cancels out vision from sight wards. This is kind of where the control wards were meant to shine is in these late game scenarios where your vision options are limited due to slot space. So keep your eyes on how Bear will maneuver those and if they're going to set them up to deny uh, Baron. And Bear has come up very, very clutch. We talk about his macro decision-making, but in those fights, you have to give this man credit. He's clearly in his elements on the Janna, and he has had some really, really, really big tornadoes Bear to set is them up. here because he's lovable. Yes. That's Gives you warm fuzzies. No, that's why he's just he's a fan favorite support. He's yeah. not recognized as, you know, being the best support in his region. He is a very experienced player, though. And again, he's on a comfortable champion Definitely, like the Janna. Well, obviously, to be a, a popular player in your region, typically you are a veteran. You've been around for a long time. But everyone that I've talked to and like, OK, so tell me about Bear. They're like, he's just really lovable. Well, they certainly are loving him right now. And now Tussle is caught in the middle of it all. And he gets his Guardian Angel popped. Helior is trying to send everybody back. And now, without friends, Tussle's gone down. And Bear picks that kill up for himself. So he's got claws, too. That's the jungler, and maybe more. Saros is now in trouble. Realm Warp, and Saros is isolated from his team. They're just pushing him apart. He's going to flash. He's going to burn everything, and he can't get enough. Shut down. Wara has found him, and now it is two kills to zero. Helior is buying all the time in the world. He flashes, he dashes, Evi gets the knockup, but Helior is standing firm, and this could be the end for the LJL in game one. They've lost their primary disengage, and it's really only Heredi available that can clear the waves. I think they're about to get smothered out. I think Latin America South are taking game one. Those two dragons are coming in handy right now, and Helior keeps on tanking all oh, the damage redemption coming up already. Forced back to Fountain, and it's only Evi who's standing outside of it. Plugo might get caught here, but they just don't give a damn anymore. They're on the tower, but they do lose Plugo. Teleport on Helior to try and keep the minion alive and tanking. They finish the last tower, but Tussle is about to come up, and it is focus on the champions, but they gotta hit the Nexus. They're gonna do it. 44 and a half in, and it was a nail biter, but Latin America South with a win. They had control from minute one for 99% of the game. It was simply a misstep when they went to push the top inhibitor that Japan got their foot back into it. But Latin America South, they're patient, they slow it down, they reset the